Hey there, and welcome. My name is Alonda Carter, and I am the Recovering Hunbot. I create anti-MLM, that's anti-multi-level marketing videos, and I also create some true crime and white-collar crime, anything that's kind of fraud-related or sort of scammy. Now, I attended a Market America training session, so you didn't have to. Previously, um, probably within the first year when I started creating anti-MLM content, I did sort of a deep dive into Market America. So I'll go ahead and link that in the video description. I also covered the death of a high ranking member of Market America, and there'll be a link to that also in the description. Today, we are going to watch together the training I attended, but specifically what I'm going to focus on is the language because all of these companies have very specialized language and I want to break that down for you. The repetition of this language is something that is used to further cement people into the overall belief of what MLMs offer, this time freedom, financial freedom, all those sort of things, and being around like-minded people. Now, I've already listened to this once and it was painful, but we're going to do it together and I'll be popping in and out just going over some of the language you're going to experience. Before we start, I want to thank my latest patron, Lawrence. Your support is so very appreciated. As a patron, you help me to up my game, getting better equipment for creating my video content. Thank you so very much. And thanks to all my patrons and to you who simply watch my videos consistently. I am so, so appreciative. Dennis Franks is a former football player for the Philadelphia Eagles and Detroit Lions. After retiring from football, he worked for a Philadelphia company called Cambridge Diet Company. Cambridge Diet Company offered a low calorie meal replacement. It has been characterized as a fad diet because the calorie intake for this extreme weight loss people experienced was at a starvation level. In 1987, he was indicted on federal drug charges. He sold cocaine to some of the Philly Eagles football players. Currently, he is the executive vice president of Market America. Jim Winkler is the vice president of sales for Market America and Shop.com. Market America is the company and Shop.com is basically a website of their preferred products. Jim has a BS in marketing from the University of Wisconsin, Whitewater. He joined Market America in 1997 as the executive field vice president of Market America. Before that, he was the vice president of sales and marketing for the Postcard Factory, which was an online souvenir and gift wholesaler from 1995 to 1998. Before joining the Postcard Factory, he was the director of sales for Russ Burney, which is now called Kids Brands, which is a gift company. And now let's see what both Jim and Frank have to say in this overall Market America training. And I'm excited about having the opportunity to work with so many people committed to move their business forward. Yeah, I am too. And it's great to see this much interest in what we're talking about now. Obviously, I am here with our executive vice president of sales, uh, Dennis Franks. I'd like to introduce him. He's a, obviously had huge success in our business and one of our, our founding on franchise owners, one of our owners, one of our, our executive vice president with the company. So Dennis, it is a pleasure to be training with you. Um, you live, eat, eat. Uh, everything that goes with that, uh, the Master UFO program. So this will be fun. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. It's good to be here tonight. And I just want to take a moment and introduce Mr. Jim Winkler, our Vice President of Sales, also an accomplished builder, proven uh, in his unfranchised business results and helping many people get to the next level. He's trained globally, and it's such a pleasure to have him as my partner, as part of the executive sales team, making a difference around the world. So, Jim, it's going to be a great 12 weeks. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. And you know, if you guys do a good job, we may do a little dance for you at the end, but not at the beginning, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. You know what, that, I think that's gotten more views than I think the whole time I was with uh, Market America over the 29 years. 
But so we have 12, uh, I, week, 12 <laughs> weeks to work on our moves. <laughs> you know, I just want to compliment you on your effort of, you know, getting that rhythm down, you know, really working on it. Uh, stay tuned. We'll be back at International Convention to talk more about that. <laughs> but, you know, I, wanted, right. I do want to take a moment and, and talk, Jim, with you about why did we call this a master class? And, yeah. you know, we've all heard to become a master at anything, you needed to spend at least 10 hours of focus, 10,000 hours of focus time to get to where you can be called a master. And in my eyes, if we're going to be talking to a master class, I want everybody to know, and this is not to make you feel uncomfortable, but there are no excuses over these next 12 weeks. What you're doing is you're coming with a group of winners that are committed to implement and reach the master on franchise owner status, qualify or requalify. What do you think about, Jim, when you think about a master's class? Yeah, when you think of a master's class, it, it is a higher level. It, it is uh, going to take more effort, and it's going to have bigger rewards. And that's really why we wanted to go through the, the, this way. So we're going to ask you to make that commitment to us for 12 weeks. And if some of you are new and that seems overwhelming, it's okay. Um, everybody's going to be at different levels that are going to be in here. And uh, it's really going to come down to what you want out of it. But we're going to approach it as if you want to take that as a master's class, as if you want to succeed and grow this business where you want to get it to. Right. It's not going to be about you winning or losing during this 12 weeks. It's going to be about the amount of effort and the learning curve that you will be going through on this. And, you know, when I think about how we put this together and what we're going to be asking, I think it's become very apparent that we are working with exceptional people starting tonight moving forward. So I'm excited, you know, uh, talking through the agenda and curriculum, you know, I think there's a lot to offer and I think we can take this crew to another level for sure. Well, let's, let's jump into it. I'm going to share my screen, Dennis, and uh, let's move into talking about this. And, you know, it's going to be a uh, a 12 week session as we've talked about uh, while we do this and you know uh, we talked about a curriculum you just mentioned that and you take a look at you know this week is really the why the what and the how and I know you and I spent some time talking about what we wanted week one to really focus on and, and why and really going through each one of these weeks and putting it together and how we're going to get there. And, and they'll blend together somewhat because we're always focused on, on, on building, but each one will have its own unique area as well. Absolutely. And, you know, when talking about the why of the master on franchise owner, you know, throughout our career, from the very beginning, people said, always used to say when we sat down you know what is the potential what can i earn and then what do i have to do to earn that and that was something that we needed to pursue and the only way you can pursue that is by actually going through the history of building successful and franchise businesses yeah that, that's right and taking a, a look at what has been proven not what we hope would happen but what has happened based on what people did. So as you take a look at this, you'll see we'll focus on different things like whether it be retailing in base 10 one week uh, and the tools to use with that, whether it be IBV and how we can increase that. Because again, that's part of hitting master UFO, uh, whether it's the prospecting, qualifying, sponsoring. And you know, as you look at each one of these, you might see it in an area you think, oh, I'm pretty good in that already. What we're going to try to do is put it together. So basically by doing each one of these, there's no way you can miss any master UFO if you put the rest of the effort in. I also love the fact that we've added earning commissions faster and basically talking to that specifically, helping those that have not yet cycled in the business to be able to, and if you have cycled, to cycle more frequency, uh, frequency, frequently. And I love the, the troubleshooting uh, and conversational marketing that we talk to. Uh, I, I just think that's great. And of course, how powerful is it to talk about follow-up and how to close? Uh, I think that's so, so very important. And of course, how do we take our first new partner through the first 90 days? 
and what that could mean to your business. So uh, it's going to be an exciting 12 weeks for sure. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, that 90 days, we, we, as we were putting out together the curriculum, we said, okay, there are going to be a lot of new people coming in. So now we got to make sure everybody knows exactly what to do with them. And then from there, it's all about leadership and leading by example, which you guys will do. So, you know, the why, the what, and the how. Um, you know, let's talk, Dennis, a little bit about what, why should people hit this? I mean, we're going to share some numbers that we shared at, at World Conference. You betcha. And you know what? It's it, it, You think uh, unfranchised owners just are thinking we want to push you to do something, jump through certain hoops. But understand, this is a systemized approach to successful unfranchised business. What does that mean? What is considered success? Well, business in general is all about profitability. You go into business to be profitable, to make a difference. You got to bring something with you that people need and want. And so what is the path to follow? When you're in business, there are certain things that have to be done so that you can accomplish the goals that you set. Um, you know, so, so very important to remember. The systemization, Jim, to me, the, the power in the structure has always been the greatest thing as far as I was concerned, building with a discipline of getting to a successful place financially. Yeah, I, I, would, I would agree. And, uh, you know, but by going through this and breaking it down and looking at what can we do, um, this will be something as you bring new teammates on that will be great to put them on. Even if they come in, you know, week four, week five, week six, why don't we get them started? One of the things Dennis and I are going to make sure these are going to be recorded. Uh, we're going to have a playlist put together because we know things can happen where people miss a week or pe new people come in. So we have the ability uh, for people to catch up on that because not only do you need the why uh, and the what, but you need the how, right? And this is what we're hoping to provide you with is the how. Uh, and to keep it in, you know, anything we put emphasis on, I think, Dennis, we've said this forever, anything we put emphasis on, uh, it happens more often. So for 12 weeks, there's an emphasis on master UFO and really getting yourself in that position. You know, that how, you know, I just want to talk about the how for a moment because over the years and through traveling literally hundreds of thousands of miles, it's not that our unfranchised owners don't have the talent. It's truly just a refinement based on the repetition and the consistency for them to go from good to great. And so this is a big part of how. So pay close attention. What you're talking between Jim and I, we're talking over 50 years experience in building unfranchised businesses. And so please respect that as we move forward. Yeah, 50 years, Dennis, how can that be? Wasn't it just yesterday? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, uh, I tell you, let me see, Dennis, I'm going to check and see if I can put on as we're doing this, one of the things I want to look at, I've, we've had a uh, comment asking if we could do closed captioning. I think I just got it. I'm hoping that will go great. Right, I did get it. Uh, so hopefully that uh, helps out with some of the people who are asking us uh, for that. Okay. Uh, Dennis, why don't you lead us on this one? and Let's jump into it because we know we got a lot, a lot to cover that we want to get to everyone. Absolutely. So, wow, this is, um, it's quite a thing, isn't it? Well, let me just start out with first, um, forgive me if I have any inaccuracies. I was never in Market America, so I am learning the language and learning what this language means as I go. So if you are in Market America, you might know more about some of this stuff than me since I'm learning as I'm going. Anyway, they tell us about the master UFO. A master UFO is an unfranchised owner who is qualified and active as an independent unfranchised owner who has made the commitment to master the unfranchised business development system by simply implementing the established tasks, activities, and practices as set forth and as defined in the master UFO program if you were wondering what that is. And UFO is unfranchised business owner. I know it's a little wacky. This, make no mistake, this is not how you train someone. This is a knowledge dump. This is two people who have 50 years of experience between them that are just talk, 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 talk. 
this is not how you actually train people so that they are successful. This is just a knowledge dump. And I've said this before in other videos, it's the sage on stage with the learner in the cage because the learner is not having any opportunity to practice, nor is that learner having any opportunity to receive feedback from the instructor. It is a one-way street. That's how MLMs all do the training. But I know Market America is going to say, we're not MLM. You've got all the ear markings, okay? If you look like a duck, you sound like a duck, you walk like a duck, you're a triangular duck in my book. So that you know, IBV is internet business volume. BV is business volume. Now, one of the phrases that was said that is extraordinarily MLME is leading by example. I cannot tell you how many times I have heard that. Also, this is a systemized approach, which translates into these are the steps that you follow. This is the plan. If you just do what we tell you and how we tell you to do it, then you're going to have success. And you know what? I don't think so. Because the numbers show that most people don't. And that's the problem. Another thing that was very, very MLME is the whole repetition and consistency. I'm surprised they haven't mentioned duplication yet. But I'm sure if you have a bingo card with that word on it, they're going to say it. Both Jim and I are very proud of our unfranchise owner pins and the jacket around that unfranchise owner pin represents the number of years. Just so you know, there are 20 years experience when you get a jacket fully covered with those special uh, crystals that we have. And also when you start seeing the blue sapphire crystals, you will see 21, 22, 23. So if you ever see someone with a UFO pin with an entirely surrounded blue stones, you know they've been doing this for 40 years. Um, rather interesting. But the unfranchised, master unfranchised owner is a structured system that identifies and quantifies what successful unfranchised owners are doing or have done to be successful. So again, this is something we haven't made up this is something that we track on a regular basis based on information that is gathered from you, our unfranchised donors. And, and Dennis, each time they do receive uh, one of the crystals, that comes because they hit UFO, on a master unfranchised owner, three out of four quarters during that year. It's a very big achievement. I know I've seen some people post that on different on social media when they hit it. And uh, boy, you, you really can be proud of that. that. That's a heck of an accomplishment when you do it. Absolutely. All right, Dennis, why don't you we'll lead off here and we'll go through, let's go through what it takes. Make sure we, we've got this. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about sort of supports the mission of our company. And that is to create the economy of the future based on you and I, each and every individual that becomes an unfranchised owner. And that is basically aggregating, uh, you know, the, the products that are purchased. So when we start, we start by every quarter completing the shopping annuity assessment. Now, granted, it won't change every quarter, but you can update it with new events or upcoming uh, anniversaries or birthdays or new friends that you've met, or you can add to new products that you've experienced. The shopping annuity assessment is nothing more than allowing you to see all the different ways that you can use our exclusive brands and our shopping online, our shopping annuity brands, and of course, everything from our super IBV products to our shop local stores that we work with. So the shopping annuity assessment is something that you want to do right away in the first couple weeks of the quarter. Yeah, and, and then redo it as Dennis said, you know, we're going to spend a, a, one of our sessions on how to generate more IBV. But really that assessment, it gets you in a position. We always tell people, we don't want you to buy more than you need. We want you to buy what you are already buying through our business, right? Through your business. And that's really important to think of. Um, Lisa and I, 
uh, went to visit one of our sons in San Diego on Saturday just for a, a, a overnight. And uh, as we were landing, she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm putting all the, I'm clicking uh, activate on every shop local because if we go out to eat somewhere or to get drinks and it happens to be one of our stores, I wanna make sure I get credit for it. Um, someone had told Lisa about a product they had uh, purchased, a service um, recently, and she went on Groupon. I just thought, I wanted to tell you this, Tess, it was great. So the, the person telling her paid 500 for it. Lisa went on Groupon and found it for 200 and that same exact service, same exact uh, office, same exact person for $297. Now, why is that important? Because she took, we went, we bought, went to shop.com and we bought three $100 gift certificates for Groupon at 7% we got. You add those on Groupon and you automatically get Groupon bucks. So then we went to Groupon, we paid for it with that, we got another 6.6%. .6%. So that item ended up to be 13.6%. And people say, well, I, you know, I just can't seem to do this. You can, but you gotta really think on it and you gotta look for different ways to structure it and, and benefit from it. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and one, one real quick thing, Jim, is that when you work for your shopping annuity, remember, this is a process, folks. It's not just going in the first month that you're in the business and throwing everything away and buying exclusive brands and so forth. It's basically as you run out of products, you're going to try your exclusive brands first. And if we don't have a brand for what you're looking for, you go to shop.com and get it that way, or you go to our shopping annuity. So it is a process. Remember that. That's right. And then, you know, number two, have a subscription to the unfranchised management system. We should all have that. I don't think we'll spend a lot of time. That just allows us to run our business. If you're, if you're on with us tonight, we're looking at you and saying you're, you're the people who want to grow this. So I'm sure you already all have that. There's such advantages to it, Dennis. Like just recently, you know, adding in all the things like hurdler. It's tax time right now. And I want to make sure everybody has used our, 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 our program in their hurdler, uh, which which was the doctor before, and it's a great tax program. Lisa's been working on uh, compiling everything we need to finalize the taxes, but that's part of your UFMS, having that. You get that for free. That's a couple hundred dollar program by itself, so make sure you have that subscription. And remember, uh, as we keep moving forward, there's more and more services added to the UFMS, so it's never you know, just ah. remains one type of service. There are multiple services that you get with that. Uh, the next point of generating some 1500 business volume in product in a respective quarter, everyone that's on today, there is no exception to the fact that you need to be doing greater than 500 business volume each and every month or 1500 business volume or more. Now, ladies and gentlemen, may think that's a lot of business volume, but it really isn't if you have a customer base and you are using our exclusive brands. And the bottom line is you've got to think customers. We are a retail driven business. It's so, so very, very important. But this 1500 in business volume does come in combination with your personal purchases along with your registered preferred customers paying ID. So in that combination, you should have no problem in hitting that 1500 business volume. Yeah, and I, and I love that. That falls right into our, our base 10, uh, seven strong. We always talk about Dennis and, you know, really what's it come out to 125 BV a week, I think would put us at 500 basically a, a month. And that's, that's setting that goal. You know, what can I do right now? I know one of the things um, in one of the accountability groups I'm running right now, we're doing a bonuses for retailing this week. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to get everybody out to a big jump with the master UFO program. And um, I'm contacting, I have 200 some customers and I'm contacting, I have an email list put together and I'm sending out an email to each one of them, thanking them for being a customer and, and reminding them of a couple of our new products and just keeping in contact with them. I think it's so important, but that's, you know, the 1500 as Dennis said, we should all be doing that with our, re with our retail, such a, a, a good thing uh, to talk about. And 300 IVV, you know, when we start looking at that, that's where it comes into what 
Dennis and I were talking about whether it be shop local, one card stores, um, uh, super IVV items. It, it really just becomes making sure you're doing as much as you can and for you in, in planning it out. I know Dennis, uh, one of your favorite products is the Immune Plus. Yes, absolutely. And it's something oftentimes that with my good customers, you know, I'm going to include one as a recommendation and how to use that. But what the Immune Plus has is that combination of not only vitamin C, vitamin D, but it has the zinc in it and also has the reishi mushroom in it. It's a brilliant product. Uh, its uh, purchase price is so reasonable with 15 IBV. Um, the other thing that I would say is I'm finding that customers are now buying our shopping annuity brands off of shop.com too. Uh, so that was something new that we're seeing. Yeah, and you know, it's it's really important for us when we think of Master UFO because we can use our customers to have that ability to be able to get our customers shopping from shop.com. And one of the best ways to do that is make sure they download Shop Buddy and then to really reinforce that if they do purchase through uh, our shop.com site or a partner store that those dollars can be used towards their BV products. I've always found people who like our BV products, our exclusive products, were easier to get to shop from shop.com on our partner stores or download Shop Buddy. It really helps. So that, that's great. Absolutely. You know, and when you think about that, we all can do it. We can all build up to it. And it's something that between you and your clientele or customers, you will be able to make that number happen. All right. The first thing they talked about in this section was that UFO jacket, you know, the little pin that you can get. And once you see the blue crystals, that means somebody has had 40 years of being in Market America. I really wonder how many people could that actually be? I mean, it cannot possibly be thousands. I mean, I'm sure there's a handful, but, you know, come on. Not really? Okay. Anyway, and you're supposed to be, like, all proud that, you know, you hit that master UFO, that that's quite an achievement. The only place on this planet where that's an achievement is within Market America. No one else gives a hoot about that. So if you make a post that you, you hit it one time, the only people that are going to be cheering you on are other people that are in Market America because the rest of your friends and family are like, would you please stop the jank? They mentioned the shopping annuity assessment. This figures out the, the what it costs you to go to these different stores. What are you buying there versus like what you could be buying through Market America so that, you know, you could get that cash back and however they do figure out the points and stuff. That's basically what that does. So it's trying to show you the benefit of using the brands associated with Market America. They also mentioned the unfranchised management system to be able to get a subscription to that. So that's more money out of your pocket to be part of Market America. Um, and you need for this whole master unfranchise owner program, you need to have 1500 BV, that's business volume. And that can be from your preferred customers because you know it's so easy to go out there and get people to sign up to be you know, customers and buying from Market America and also your purchases. And they did mention this base 10, seven strong. My understanding, which it may change, this is what my understanding is of it right now is the base 10. That is to get 10 repeat customers, people that are going to keep buying from Market America. And then, you know, you can always tell them you too could make money just like I am and use it as a recruitment tactic. I kind of figure that's what it'll end up doing. They also mentioned the Shop Buddy app. So you need to download that because, you know, you need to always make sure that you're always keeping in the forefront of your mind everything about Market America. And they that's about all they mentioned in this section. So let's go on and see what other kind of fun little things we get to hear about. Uh, also, when we start talking about personally sponsored one qualified and active unfranchised owner in a respective quarter. And, you know, I talk to a lot of people who tell me, Dennis, I've had everything but my personally sponsored. Well, from this day forward, we're going to fix that so that you never have a problem getting at least that one personally sponsored. But there is something that you have to remember. Every personally sponsored unfranchised owner that you register really should be that person plus two. 
and their person plus two because we want to work with every personally sponsored to build out base 10 seven strong as illustrated in your getting started guide so one personally sponsored unfranchised owner qualified through the process should be net seven unfranchised partners in your organization so it becomes important to make sure we are doing those um um those evaluations and getting people in front of them you know after we do that one of the next major steps is making sure we attend or conduct a new unfranchised owner training a basic five training once per quarter and to make sure we uh attend or conduct an executive certification tour uh, a training uh once per calendar year so again as we look at this what are we covering? We've talked about retailing, right, Dennis? We've talked about That's IVV. We've talked about sponsoring. Now we're talking about training. Those are some pretty important topics. And the next one is, I, I think, as important as anything that you're going to talk about. Right. Well, the one thing that's important is that you earn. And, of course, in this one portion is that if you're not earning yet, during that quarter, you're able to go through the basic five diagnostic test which is a brilliant way to evaluate are you doing correct the action items and are you working with your team with those action items so it really helps you identify where you can improve your efforts now once you get to at least 300 dollars in commissions per month or 900 in commissions or a respective quarter, you no longer have to take the diagnostic unless you choose to. But what you're going to find is once you start mastering the unfranchised owner program, it's going to start duplicating and imprinting within your organization. Very powerful way to make sure you can check up. You're doing all the results producing activities and imprinting correctly. That's right. And we're going to spend a session on the diagnostic test. And I know uh, we're looking at, again, updating that. We update it uh, every so often to make sure it stays current. So by the time we get to that section, we'll have it 100% updated again. Uh, and, you, you know, that used to be, and, and Dennis, you, in fact, were my first. Uh, if you remember, when I went to a moving up seminar, it was, I think, you and JR and uh, it might have been Kevin. Kevin. You, had, it was Kevin you, yeah. you trained uh, myself and a team of 11 I brought with me, including my mom, if you remember that. <laughs> uh, we had some fun with that. Uh, my mom, Dennis said we had to learn about the, the what is it. And my mom said, isn't that why we're paying you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, you got to have fun. No. <laughs> you got to have fun. But, yeah, you know, and buying tickets as well is so important. The three tickets that you need to have to go to a major event. So all these things add up to that mastery. Of, and this program has been put together to cover everything that will grow your business. Uh, and is really a great, great way to take a look at it. Dennis, where can we find this? Well, that's very important for all of you to know. Uh, in the past, everything was manual. And now we have the availability to go right online in our unfranchised management system under organization, in reports, under management, and be able to locate everything that you need to track your master unfranchised owner program. So at any time, you come in and physically see how much BV, how much IBV your organization is tracking. It also has the ability for which quarter that you're working in. So you can go back, you can go forward, and you can also work with your partners and identify how they're doing if they're teaming up with you. So again, it's going to track your BV, your IBV, as well as your tickets and sponsoring, but also manually when you go to trainings, you have to physically write in who your trainer was, the date of the training, and the location. That's and right. then it's saved automatically. So there is a save button on this when you're entering in there. And then finally, you know, it's just going to let you know if you've met the requirement of commissions or so forth or taken the diagnostic. So <laughs> this is making it really easy for you. So don't worry about the paperwork. Just stay focused on the actual things that have to be done to reach master unfranchised owner. 
That's right. And, you know, you can even where it says view qualified orders, that will pop open so you can look to make sure what's there. But the key is if we get in this habit, what Dennis and I really open is not that you just barely get there. We want you to start crushing Master UFO. We want to make it so that it becomes such a part of what we do, what we teach, what we are. We're going to talk a little bit about culture a little bit later, that it becomes part of our Market America culture to hit that and that we're getting that. So all that is laid out, as Dennis said so perfectly, uh, for people and, and just puts it so it makes it makes it simple. And, you know, going back to Dennis, when we took a look at this, um, you know, I think we're going to share some numbers now that blew you and I away. Absolutely. And, you know, when we talked about this, I just want to say this is that making master on franchise owner, when you do it enough times, it becomes the rhythm of the business. It's like basic five becomes the rhythm of business and automatically you are fulfilling these mandatory or things that you need to do to duplicate an imprint every time that you start your day. It's an automatic and that's really important. It makes all the difference in the world, folks. Believe us when we say that because you become running on a track and you are moving it. Just remember this, we're running a marathon to your success. And we're going to run this marathon in a series of sprints that last three months, and quarterly, calendar quarters. And then you take a breath and you start another one. And you don't stop until you get to where you want to go. And you'll find you'll be a winner every time. Yeah, we, we were talking earlier today and we said it's always been 12-week sprints, 90-day fast tracks, whatever it may you want to call it. And the Master UFO program is, is designed to do that 12-week sprint that Dennis is talking about. Well, you know, Dennis, when um, we, we started looking at these numbers and we started going in and digging in, and, you know, we talked about this at World Conference. If you saw this there, we're going to give you a little repeat. If you didn't see it, get, get ready to open. Your, your eyes are going to open wide right now. But we took a look and we said, Let, let's look at executive coordinator to executive supervisor coordinator because we thought – don't want to look at the person who's brand new, who hasn't really gotten a start yet, because that's not a fair look at it. Uh, let's look at the person who has a little bit of an organization or a good organization building, and let's look. Let's not go direct or above, because those are the big, huge organizations. And we said, what happens if they achieved it a minimum of one time a year? And we picked the number three years because of the two to three year plan of doing this. We said, you're doing it consistently. So 2018, 2019, 2020, and when we looked at the statistics, it came back and the number was 57,566. And I remember our first thought, Dennis, was, wow, that is some incredible uh, supplemental. For some people, it could go the full time, but for a lot of people, it's extra income coming in because you, you've become consistent at doing something. And once again, that wasn't even counting the retail profits. Right. a thousand dollars a week. Very impressive. Yeah, and then uh, Dennis, why don't you talk yeah. about when we when we said, okay, what happens when they hit it twice? Absolutely, and you know, we just start digging in. When you start working with numbers, you want to see all different types of ways to look at numbers. So let's take a look at the same group of executive coordinators. And all of you know there are thousands of executive coordinators. And let's go up to the executive supervising coordinator position. And they have hit a minimum of two times per year. So once again, average earnings shot up to $85,259 on average for those individuals being consistent, I'm going to say that, consistent in 2018, 2019, and 2020. So this is recent numbers. We're not going back to 2010, 2011, 2012. So this was really an eye-opening. It's it's an amazing number. In fact, wasn't there, there was a, like a pandemic or something in 2020, and we still included that number, Dennis, because of the growth that went on, the, the business doesn't stop because of the way we're based. 2018, 2019, 2020. And this is what it came out to be for the people who hit it two or more. But I, Dennis, you you said then, Jim, let's look at the numbers of the people who don't achieve it. Remember this? And I said, okay, let's pull it up and we put it in. 
So we did the same thing. We looked at every executive coordinator and every executive supervising coordinator who did not achieve an Astro UFO. And here's what happened during that. When we did that, the earnings dropped down to 5,000. I mean, hey, that's great. They made, they made an extra five grand, but it's one tenth or one eleventh of what they made if they hit it one or more times per year. And, and you know, all the way up to 85,000 when you, you did it uh, two or time, more times per year. It was really, this was the one that was my aha. Uh, that right. We did these numbers. And then this is something that you see people going through the motions versus a focused effort. And, and I can't tell you enough throughout my athletic career, and I know, Jim, you being a, a professional athlete in regards to tennis, you know, the bottom line is if you go through the motions, you'll be able to play, but the bottom line, you'll never excel. Right. And again, we're not in business just to go through the motions. We're in business because we want to achieve something. So we went on and said, hey, let's take a look at another part of this. Let's really go from executive coordinator to international field chairman. So now we're on the big hitters, right? We're, we're adding so the now, again, we just wanted to see how the numbers came out. And these, once again, were a minimum of one time per year in 2018, 2019, and 2020. And once again, the earnings go up to $148,125. Now, this is what it is. This is not numbers we're pulling out of the air. I just want you to know that people who have come into this business and focused on accomplishing the things necessary to be successful are earning the types of income that people are really setting their sights on. So, All righty dighty. So people from what I can gather have let him know that, you know, I'm having a problem being able to get personally sponsored people. Of course you are because people smell what it is and, they really don't want to do it. Um, but he does say, you know, like, you know, if you do sponsor someone, that person plus they also should sponsor two more. And then their person, you know, should be sponsoring two more. So it actually should be net seven. I'm not exactly sure what net seven is. So if you know what that means, put it in the comments so that we can all be, you know, informed. And then he did mention the basic five diagnostic test which is kind of like a checklist, but you also kind of rank where you are in terms of your attitude and knowledge, goal setting, retailing, recruiting and sponsoring, and also doing your following up. Something that was mentioned more than once is imprinting, which is a psychological um, term. And it was duplicate. Duplicate also is an MLM term, very MLM-y. And so this whole concept of imprinting to me, it makes me think of child development and imprinting, you know, habits upon, you know, a young child. And that just really kind of creeped me right on out. They also mentioned buying three tickets, you know, to a, a national, was it a national major event? A major event. And there's also this thing where you can track your progress to reaching master UFO and you write in your trainings, which by the way, the trainings that you're required to go to, to become this master UFO, you have to pay for them. They're not free. And then they wanted to show us some numbers. Now, the thing about these numbers is, is that very few people, a very low percentage is able to hit any of these. Numbers we don't know are how many people are in within the entire ecosystem of Market America are at these different ranks. How long have they been there? How long did it take for them to get there? Did they attain it and then lose it? How many people have lost it and never were able to get back to it again? There's a lot of things they don't tell us, but what they're trying to do is paint this picture that if you just keep doing these things, this is where it's going to take you. You're going to get there. And that doesn't mean that it will. It doesn't mean maybe you'll do it once, possibly a very slim chance. And the first number that was mentioned was earning $57,736. Now, the only income disclosure statement that I can find goes back to 2015. So I have to use that because they have nothing else more recent. Anyway, someone earning that amount, it is 2.22% of the people within Market America that I guess are active. I can't remember exactly, and it's going to be popped up on the screen, but you know, it's been a few minutes since I've looked at it, and I don't remember absolutely everything that I have ever seen. I don't have a photographic memory. I mean, maybe you do. I don't. And then they wanted to look at people who were able to hit master UFO 
twice over a three-year period. And then that amount went up to 85,259, but only 3.4% from that 2015 income disclosure statement were actually able to hit that. We don't know how many people are at that rank, you know, the what ranks that they had put up. We don't know the executive coordinator, executive supervising coordinator, which these are all made up terms. You could call it, you know, a dancing monkey. It doesn't matter what they're called, but it sounds impressive and important now, doesn't it? And let's see. Um, oh, this really got to me is the whole thing like, you know, now let's look at people who were not able to hit a master UFO and the earnings go down substantially and they just call it, oh, those are just the people going through the motions. How do you know they're just going through the motions? They could be like that little duck on the pond, you know, looking all calm, cool and collected. And then those little feet are just to go and they're working really, really hard, but they're not able to get people to, you know, take action. So I am offended for the people who did earn that amount, who are basically being put down by these two jack jank holes. I'm just gonna call them a jank hole. That'll be a more polite way to, anyway, I just really, that just unnerved me. I, th I found it really insulting. I'm not even a part of this and I've never been a part of it, but I'm insulted for the people who were not able to, you know, earn more than that and that they're being looked down upon. Shame on you for doing that. That is just nasty. And then they mentioned the person, or I guess at the rank, executive coordinator to international field chairman. Oh, such impressive little titles that we have here. $148,125. But that is also 3.4%. So that person who was making something in the 80s and the person making something close to $150,000, very few people are doing that. So you can see there's a range. And that's something else. We don't know what the median is for this. We don't know what the range is for each of these numbers. We don't know how many people are able to achieve this. And we don't know, are they actually able to do it year after year or quarter after quarter, however, whatever the time slot is, are they really able to? Because I think they always kind of skew it to make people like see these numbers and think, yeah, I want to get there. And if I just keep going and I believe and I work really hard and I follow this plan and I do this assessment and I'm going to achieve it. And I'm just going to say, you can go over to r slash anti MLM and look at stories about people who have been in market America. No, most people, no, no, they can't. Nay, nay. You have the same type of opportunity by doing what successful unfranchised owners do. Right. And, you know, when we get to this level, I want everyone to understand we are looking at when you get to an international field chairman and even director. And about, sometimes people have been in the business a long time, but we're showing the ones who are still doing what needs to be done and how their incomes are growing. It really becomes something. Someone in, in the chat I saw said, is this a combination of the three years, the numbers? No, this is per average earnings per year. I want to make sure people understand that uh, for the for those years. So it's not a combination of how much they earn in three years. It's average earning per year if they hit it one time per year at these levels. And then, Dennis, we moved it up. We said, let's look at two times uh, per year. And we looked at that. It went up into the, the stratosphere. It went up to 211,488 and really just showed that, you know what, if we could get it, and that's when you and I Really, we've been on this for about, I don't know, four or five years real hard now, but then we really said, we got to make this commitment. Let's put this class together. Let's give everybody that opportunity to get there and let's get the, everybody in the field hitting Master UFO. Absolutely. Hey, Jim, before we go further, I'd like to just address some of the questions and answers sure. real quick. Um, Krista, you would ask about how do you add products to the shopping annuity assessment that aren't listed? Now, again, on occasion, if it's a shop and annuity brand and it's something that you feel that we can add to the line, please let us know. You know, just send a communication either to Jim or I. That's a first start. You can basically send it to your senior partner uh, that's on the advisory council. We meet with them on a regular basis. However, if it's not on your shop and annuity assessment, it doesn't mean we don't have it. You know, you simply just have to make a note and search it on shop.com, which you'll finally have it. You know, when we first built the shopping annuity assessment, it was no easy, easy task. And so we did everything we could think of, but we know we didn't have everything. So let's just make a separate note and then we'll find it 
And if it's something that we can add, we sure would like to know about it. Um, and the other question by Sherry, will the PowerPoint be available to download under unfranchised materials? At this point, no, we're going to offer it in a recording. Uh, we haven't made any decisions on the release of the PowerPoints. There's no reason why we can't, but we'd love to be able to share this in its entirety with our explanations with the PowerPoint. So we will consider it, but we plan, as Jim said, to go out there and make it work on a recording session. Um, Gabriella, uh, let's see, can we have a Zoom training on how to use the ND Navigate the Hurdler? Oh. I didn't use the hurdler, Dennis. And if I can answer that one, if you ever, there are, if you go to YouTube, I believe they're under Market America, there are a couple uh, training sessions on there. Or if you go to hurdler and type in hurdler on YouTube, I think you'll find some more because hurdler has training sessions as well. That'll give you a real good start on there to make sure you know how to do it. And one last thing that I will say in regards to Shop Buddy, uh, we encourage it. It works best on your laptop and tablet. As of right now, it's not needed so much on Shop Buddy. I don't know if it works as effective as we like it, but it's been very good in our mobile app to find products without it. Um, Jim, do you know or have any updates on the mobile app Shop Buddy at this time? Yeah, Shop Buddy, because of uh, what happens with technology, you can't track with Shop Buddy on a phone as well uh, because uh, there, there's uh, regulations on tracking by phone. Much better on a computer to use it. Uh, so I, I always recommend to use it more by the, the computer, Dennis, mm -hmm. in terms of to get the, the full benefit of using it. And there was a question about updating our newer products. I'm sure that's in process already, but Dennis and I will take a note uh, and make sure we get to the, the correct people to make sure that that is the shopping duty is getting updated with those uh, if it's not being done already so thank you for those yes all right let's keep moving then let's talk about a commitment then so you committed <laughs> all yeah. in I'm with, all I'm with you all for the next 12 weeks yeah we're wearing the jersey so if you go right now to unfranchised.com, you go to the uh, sales training area, the support materials, you type in masterclass, you type in MUFO, uh, you're going to pull up a commitment page and we're going to ask you to fill it out. Uh, you can see what it is right here. Put your name in there. I, Jim Winkler, am making a commitment to myself. Uh, I'm going to sign it. I'm going to date it. I'll put my email on it. We want you to email it to masterufo at marketamerica.com. Uh, we want to know who's wearing the, who, who is going to wear the jersey with Dennis and I. You yeah. know, who's going to make the same commitment? Uh, as Jay would say, jump in the wheelbarrow with us for the next 12 weeks. Uh, so that is right there again. It's under support materials. Uh, download that and send that to the uh, master UFO at marketamerica.com. Uh, okay. And uh, let's talk about accountability, Dennis, because part of what you and I decided on this is we have some accountability with this as well. We're going to try to give you a number of different things to do. And again, in our back office, we have that accountability. And uh, as Dennis ran you through before, a lot of people don't know where this is, Dennis, right? Right, right. Well, you know what? I'm a stickler about, as you are, with accountability because you can't, you know, if you don't measure it, you don't know how well you're doing. So this is something that we put in to help you and your team. Under organization, under reports, then you find weekly accountability. Now, when you hit weekly accountability, what you're going to get is a series of questions, okay? And in doing so, Jim, if you go to the next slide, um, what in doing so is you're going basically talk about audios or videos that you've reviewed and what you learned from them. You're going to talk about doing specific things in regards to following up with people, yep, put on your uh, possibilities list. Did you do your trial runs? Did you basically go out with your samplings and so forth? These are all there to complete. Now, when you do go through this, if you went or when you follow up, we want to know who you followed up with, and we want to know the dates and the outcome. Now, you can only post three on this, but the bottom line is, that's a good indication that you're making your follow-up calls. 
Now, when you're doing an evaluation, please put the name of the individual, the date that you did it, and the outcome. We want to see if you're booking that follow-up appointment and not just letting it go. It's critical that you get to that next stage uh, of your program there. The commitment statement, that completely creeped me out in weekly accountability. This the commitment statement, it is a way to keep you in check because once you do something like that and you have to email it in, you feel like you owe somebody something and it's like you're more likely to go through with that behavior. The same thing with filling out all of this stuff online where, you know, your, your audios that you're listening to, your videos, what you've learned from, the follow-ups, the possibilities, whatever that is, it's just all creeping me out. It is just another way to indoctrinate, to keep you within the system so that you believe that you are going to be able to have this financial freedom and be able to earn $148,000, you know, in a year or 200 and some odd thousand dollars in a year, even though very few people, the percentage is very small compared to the entire ecosystem of everyone who is involved with Market America, which we still don't have what that number is. And I'd really like to know it. And again, when you're going through each of the different things, what media you're going through, it's all part of what we want to do. You'll be able to figure it and you'll submit it to once again, that master UFO at marketamerica.com address. That would be where you submit your accountability to us. Yeah, that, that's right. And guys, understand that this accountability is not for Dennis and I, it's for you. It's to be able to measure, to monitor, to know you've got something. Yes, we will review. We will look at the different uh, emails that are coming in. But really, we wanted it to be so that you could say, okay, I can measure and I can see what I'm doing that, uh, how I'm doing with this, and put some numbers to it. And all we're looking for, you know, if you say, oh, I'm so far from Mr. UFO, how am I ever going to get there? Well, you know, if you get a little bit better during these 12 weeks, that's great. And if you get a lot better, that's fantastic. But you'll be able to measure it by sending that in. So a couple of things we'll be sending in. And this is where Dennis and I were talking about culture. We want this to become the culture of, of your team, the culture. When they say, hey, I'm part of uh, Sandy Rodriguez's team, that culture is master UFO. If I'm part of Shannon Goodberry's team, that culture is everybody hits master UFO. You know, that is really what we want people to understand because that culture will lead to really what the new people come in and they just expect to do. That's one of the things that I live by, how you, whatever you put into motion stays in motion. And this is really important. A lot of times when we talk about for myself, it's been base 10, seven strong, really following the guidelines of getting people to earn, basically master on franchise on a program. And that basically includes the training, the buying of three tickets. It's automatic team. That's the kind of thing that you create those expectations right from day one. Many of us qualify, but we don't tell individuals what they have to do to be successful before they come into business. So part of the qualifying is not putting the people in front of the plan or using the product. They got to know what to do to get what they want at the same time. That's right. That's right. And so this will put it all together. So we've put together a couple of things just to make sure we've got uh, a correct idea of where we're going. And again, there's the email. I see people in the chat asking for the email. It's masterufo at marketamerica.com. That is the fourth time we've put it up, so we will now expect you to have it. <laughs> so we've got our commitment sheet, which you saw earlier, which we can download from unfranchise.com. We'd like you to do a names list of 100 people. I don't know about you, Dennis. Every time I do a names, new names list, I feel like it's uh, it's invigorating what I'm going to do with the business because it, it gives me opportunity to see again maybe some things I haven't been thinking about. Totally. And, you know, the most important thing about a names list, it's a shortcut. So if you have time, you can make a call. So include email address or the mobile phone number and how you know the person so if you have a moment you can make a call or of course utilizing some of the tools that we have to communicate with those individuals so so important yeah and then you know next is a goal statement and what you want to accomplish over the next 12 weeks so what do we mean by that well what do we want to do in 12 weeks what are you hoping to accomplish but well, i'd say one of them should be we should all hope to hit master ufo 
Some of you may look to do even more. Maybe, maybe it's to sponsor more than one person. Maybe it's my goal is to sponsor two people in the 12 weeks. Maybe my goal is to retail $2,000 or $3,000, whatever number you pick. But, you know, make a goal statement and then put down some goals for your next 12 weeks you'd like to accomplish. And then what we want you to do, besides sending them in to MasterUFO at MarketMarket.com, put them somewhere where you see them and track them week by week, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, by doing that, along with your accountability sheet, you are going to be putting the business in front of you and ready to go. And these are going to be the best 12 weeks you've had in a very, very long time. Absolutely. And, you know, by doing this, it's good discipline. It's good work in what we're doing. You know, uh, I want to jump back real quick to some of the questions. Uh, of course, there's always going to be questions on this. Just checking if this recording session will be made available to us. Absolutely. Give us about 24 to 36 hours and it will be out. Uh, we'll be pushing it out there. Uh, what is the email address? You said it again. It's going to masterufo <laughs> at marketamerica.com. And uh, I'd like to know how those numbers, especially the executive coordination to international field, achieving two times per year, how do you arrive at those numbers? Well, basically, the anonymous person that asked is that we know what everybody earns based on commissions that we pay out. We also look and see if those individuals that are our executive coordinator are active in the business and meet their regular requirements and are in the position of earning. And they've cycled at least once and in process. At that point, we measured based on their performance once at executive, how often did they get master UFO? And we took each of the different uh, levels on franchise levels up to executive supervising coordinator, which is the level in which they exceeded $15,000 in the four-week pay cycle. So we took that, took away the coordinators and on franchise owners and took away directors and above. So we basically used those mathematics and statistical analysis in identifying the total number and, of course, dividing those individuals and in earning commissions. And that's where we came with the average. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was great because it was... It, we really wanted to make sure these were real solid numbers that we could back up, that we could do. And uh, by doing that, it, I think that's where, again, we got so excited. It doesn't mean that someone is brand new who did it in their first two to three years. I always want to state that. That's why I said before. It, 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 this is taking people who have been in 20 years and people who have been hit it, people who hit it uh, in the first you know, couple of years. But it's averaging them out and saying, if you stay the course, here is where you're going to be if you do this. And uh, I think those are just, I don't think there's anybody in the world who can put numbers like that together if they follow a system like this. Right. And you know what? If you are going to do the master and franchise owner, Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, it should be an individual that you have sponsored in your home country or in your home region. Does yeah. this matter if, as long as it's in your region, correct? Yeah, I believe so, Dennis. I would have to check to make sure on that again. I think it's on the Master UFO sheet. I don't want to say it incorrectly, but I thought it was home region. Right. And Alicia, you know, in regards to audios to listen to, you have an unfranchised media app. And if you go into your back office underneath your help and training, you're going to see unfranchised media. And there'll be a lot of audios that you can choose from. And don't forget your learning center, too. That also has many things that you can work with. That's right. Okay. You know, again, as we, we get ready to, to wrap up this first session, you've got your homework on there. I hope you answered uh, the questions that, that popped out for everybody as well. This will be where we'll be going forward. Um, again, everything can be sent to masterufo at marketamerica.com. You can find the commitment sheet again at unfranchise.com to your back office. Uh, if you go to uh, the support materials and just type in um, MUFO or type in a master class or master UFO, it should pull up there. We tested it before this to make sure you could get it easily. 
But we're going to have a lot of fun. As someone said, Dennis, they'd love to know how you do a coin with with fun and business. And basically, Dennis and I just dance and the fun happens. <laughs> but you know what? That camaraderie comes in your coin from doing the business. I want to make this very clear. You know, it's a whole lot easier to have fun with people who are doing the business both experiencing the successes and failures of the day. You see, everything isn't always a success, but you always have to understand that everything that you do contributes to the learning curve. And as long as you evaluate it and improve the next time, you're going to be better each and every time. But I, I find so much humor in building the business and the different types of people that we talk to. And the experience. And that we have. Kevin always used to say to me, Dennis, building the business is more fun than reality TV. <laughs> and um, because of the things that happen, you know, and I, I would agree with them. And when you build it, you know, you have a great time. Um, and but you, you build some great relationships and you build something that's going to be here for uh, the long term with you. As it has for Dennis and I, as he mentioned, over 50 years between the two of us now uh, with Market America, building this business. Uh, working with our teammates, working with, with, with you uh, to grow this. We're excited to take it uh, on for the next 12 weeks and make it different. I hope you guys have liked what we're starting with. I, I want you to make that commitment. I want you to get that, that homework done right off the bat. And uh, let, let's get after this and, and let's have a lot of uh, fun with it. And, and I see some things coming in on the, the chat. Hey, your goals are your goals. It sounds selfish. That, that's okay. It's your goal. Okay. And, and always remember that. I remember one time at a master, um, uh, 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 what am I calling it? A, uh, why am I forgetting, Dennis, what I do on the boat? <laughs> oh, the moving up somehow. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm pulling the master you below. I can't think of moving up somehow. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Someone said to me, they said, um, they said, you know, I feel bad because my goal is to, uh, speak in front of people. And I said, why would you feel bad? And then I had to be training with Stacy White, and she said, I'll tell you what, that was my goal from the beginning. I, I, I wanted to be a singer. I wanted to do things. So in this business, I wanted to train. I wanted to teach. I wanted to be in front of people. You got to remember, it's always your goals and where you want to go. We all have different goals uh, to hit it. So have fun. Let's build. We'll see you next week at the exact same time. Uh, Dennis, any ending comments, or should we say goodbye and let people get to work on their hands? <laughs> no, my, my only comment is, is let's do this. You're in a master class now. You're with the big boys, and there are no excuses, only results. Let's take our swings, and let's make it happen. All right, everyone. Thanks for spending the time with us. We look forward to seeing everything you send in, and we look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. We'll have some great results already happening. Take care. All right. Good night, Dennis. See you, buddy. You know, it is so painful listening to this stuff. Now, I did mention culture, beliefs, and values, which, yes, that is one way to define culture. But the thing is, what they're actually doing is they're altering your belief system and what your values are so that they are in line with what Market Americas are. That's the part that I think is really, really creepy is that they are changing you in this whole, you know, what you put in motion stays in motion. That was just gross. They mentioned the base 10, seven strong again next week. We'll get into what the base 10 is because that's week two. If only they would at least at the very least look up what Gagne's nine events of instruction are and apply that to actual training. That would really be helpful. I would actually feel like, oh, People are actually learning something here. They're getting an opportunity to try something new, get feedback, they're assessed by it, and then try it again. But it's not. It is just a knowledge dump. This is more, you know, the, the learner in a cage with the sage on the stage or the sage on the stage with the learner in the cage. That's the way it goes. The sage on the stage with the learner in the cage. You know, sometimes I can't remember these things. But they gave you homework. And this homework is just, you know, a commitment statement, please getting you more indoctrinated into the belief that Market America is your savior and is going to take you to the promised land. Getting you to write that list of 100 people. How many MLMs have we heard that in? Oh, wait, Market America is not an MLM, but they do everything like an MLM. So please, it's an MLM. Triangular duck here, triangular duck. 
and then a, a goal statement and also to be involved in that accountability. That's just to keep you around these like-minded people, all these people that are believing in Market America and what it offers. I just see this as a lot as fitting the bite model, behavior control, information control, thought control, and emotional control. Because, you know, there's an emotional connection. When you see that number, you're like, oh, I want to get that. And you just kind of get that, like, you know, rush of emotions to be able to think of what it'd be like to be there. I want to know what your thoughts and opinions are about this training that we sat through. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. This is actually my third time now because I filmed this earlier and guess what? Something went wrong. And so, you know, I had to do it again. Yes, I put myself through this torture for you multiple times. Again, let me know what your thoughts and opinions are about this. And if you happen to know more about Market America than I do, well, good for you because I'm learning as I'm going. Like I said, <laughs> I am not a master at Market America, but I do find it interesting. I find the language interesting because it's only a small group of people who know what all of this these terms are. And if you were ever involved in an MLM, there's very specific specialized language for each and every MLM, but then it crosses over because you do have common terms like upline and downline. And it's only within this ecosystem of MLM that anybody really cares about any of that. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you on the next video. And remember you're beautiful and I love you.